call the penalty of the Board of Senate Commissioners, which all join the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, any public comment? Not any public here. Anybody online that would like to make a comment? Not agenda item. Seeing none, we'll move right along. Um, we had a chance to read the minutes from the last meeting. I have. I'll make a motion to approve as written. I have a second. I'll second. I'll second by Commissioner Coyle. All in favor, send up by saying aye. 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 Pass the syringes in. Mr. Comments and committee reports. Uh, I really don't have anything. I plan on uh, going to the extension board meeting tonight at six o'clock at the Presbyterian Church here in Atchison. Um, and then tomorrow night, we've also been invited to the fair board meeting at Effingham. Uh, that's at seven. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to try to make that one as well. That's all I have. Um, I just wanted to. Um, congratulate the Atchison Area Community Foundation for their match day. Um, they had a total of 553 total gifts for local organizations, totaling 229,273, which is awesome for one day of giving, I feel like. Um, and then also, I will be going to the fair board meeting um, as well tomorrow evening um, for the invitation. Um, and my uh, chief, Mike Wilson, has asked me to meet with him last Friday, one day last week, um, to discuss the joint communications uh, resolution. So I did that. Um, and then also have been um, in contact with the senior village residents' family members to give them an update um, on our admin resignation last week and working with. Um, a gentleman named Mark Hastings. He owns Easton um, and Nortonville's nursing homes, as well as manages the one in Savannah, Missouri for the county. And we have a meeting set up with him um, tomorrow morning as well uh, to see how they can help. An update on numbers from Senior Village. Um, last week, we had 20 residents and six staff members. And then this week, we have 21 uh, residents with eight staff members is our active positives, but the ones coming off of quarantine are getting back, moved back to their rooms for recovery. Um, so that's, that's exciting because I know a lot of the families really want their family members to be comfortable and, and get back to what they're used to. So that's all I have. Let's do business before the board. Uh, Swindle, Jansen, Hawk, and Lloyd. Mr. Lloyd's here. Is Swindle, am I saying that correct? That's correct. That's, yeah. that's not a very good name for an account. Uh, <laughs> I, I've done a lot of public speaking, even on the National Ethics Committee for CPAs, and uh, I would get that every time I would get introduced to go a CPA <laughs> at a firm called Swindle. And that's, yeah. Uh, there, there is a, when I first interviewed with him, there is a, a very famous uh, pastor, Swindle, and, uh, but he's pronounced it Swindle. That's the way he pronounced it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool. He, he never uses his last name. He always said it's Carver. Carver Swindle. He's from Mississippi. He just always uses Carver. He never he never says his last <laughs> name. Know, I'm Mr. Swindle. <laughs> yeah. 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 Make it French and Swindle. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're here to talk about an engagement letter. You guys want to just kind of give it? We have a lot of people watch the video. Yeah, so sure. If you introduce your firm, and, yeah, okay. Uh, what what, what sure. we're planning to do? Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, my name is Scott Lloyd of Swindle Jansen Hawk Lloyd, and this is John Albright. And uh, John and Carlotta visited with uh, the planning, I guess that'd be the planning committee or what? Yeah, the commission last time, and uh, that they were here. And then we came back to answer any questions and talk about it more. And so it's kind of a two part. We get kind of a proposal of a background of our firm. Our firm has been around since 36, and I've been doing this for 38 years. And uh, we have a group of about about eight or 10 that all they do is government. So that's why we jumped in. It was a natural to jump into this because there's not a lot of people that want to tackle spark or rescue funds like this. 
uh, we, um, we've got a, the approach that uh, we have a really good working knowledge of the single audit, which is going to be involved in this, the uniform guidance, which is going to be involved in this, and a lot more pages than Spark from the standpoint of background and internal controls. And that's going to be a, a big part of the framework here. With that, uh, we looked at all the other consultants, including Widow Brian, which is uh, the state of Kansas's consultant. And we worked at, with them quite a bit in the Spark money. Their, their fee is 10%. And so if you look at the engagement letter, and we had a few questions about this uh, from your county counselor. Uh, uh, if you look at that, ours is 5%. And that 5% is if only the county uh, actually contracts with us. And then that would be uh, paid as the funds are expended. So like if you spend, let's just say you spend uh, uh, 500,000 in the next uh, year and you've drawn down half of the money, you draw down the other half, it's, it's as it's expended. Uh, one of the questions that was brought up is this 10% initial retainer of 10% and in the way it's quoted in here, it's of the fixed fee. So the fee would be the 5% would be the 149,880. So that would be 10%. And we would actually, it's, it's, it's not due like just immediately, we would send the bill and, and then that would be, and that we've put a lot of time into it already, just trying to get up to speed, and, uh, trying to understand all the regulations and the final regulations aren't even out yet. Now they're saying August 31st, I think the last we heard. And the internal control framework, no one wants to tackle that. Uh, even when O'Brien said they might, but I'm not sure they will. So that's why we, we kind of set it 5%. Uh, everywhere we went, it seems like everybody thinks that's pretty reasonable compared to Whit O'Brien's 10%. So, well, uh, I mean, you might, you're going I add think, I'm not sure that they're 10%, but that's what they've been including to, to the yeah. uh, webinars. So that's been our assumption. Uh, we don't have that in writing. So yeah. And there's no, and there's no limitation actually, but they're kind of saying it in writing. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, and with that, then what we would actually be involved with, we see now this could we're pretty flexible and how how involved and what things you want to do, but we would help with the internal control framework and make sure that the the county uh, offices that receive and handle and expend that money is is done under the guidelines. We would do our best to interpret the 156 pages of uniform guidance that apply to the rescue funds and then the reporting requirements, uh, uh, making sure the reporting requirements are done properly and, and would help with those. We don't know yet. Uh, the first one, the zero report uh, is what a lot of them are going to have. There may be some that don't have it, but uh, as of August 31st, uh, it's going to be a portal probably. And so they won't have an actual, we're hoping uh, they have a downloadable form that we can use and manipulate uh, and manipulate it in a good word. Uh, <laughs> I'm almost swimming. Uh, uh, actually, where you can actually change it to fit the situation like Excel, uh, but we're not sure about that yet. And we would help with each one of those reports. And I think the reason, one last thing, and when I said this earlier this morning, is for whether it's the county or us as consultants, uh, keeping any kind of regulations going for five years is at least probably four to five years at minimum is going to be an incredible challenge, you know, because if, uh, if you looked at Spark, how many times it changed, it's amazing. And I'm not sure how many times this will change, but that's all kind of laid out in there. And I think uh, uh, you're also, you're, I'm sorry, I, I can't blank on your name, but County Counselor uh, said, also asked a question about would the fee be above that? And it, it would never be above that unless there were just like big changes to the program. I mean, and we would, we would never just charge it. We would come back and we would discuss how's the best way to approach this, you know, going forward with all these regulation changes. We don't see that happening. Uh, the 5% would be the 5% of what the funds are. And depending on the project, it could be spent in one year or two, two years, or it could be take the whole five to even the extension, you know, the extensions. So I don't know if that answered all your questions. John emailed you back, yeah. but uh, that's kind of what you had asked about. Um, I don't know. Is there any other questions? Uh, you know, I might point out to everybody at home. Yeah. We're talking about the American Rescue Plan. Absolutely. And it, it, it's, a, it's, done by the, it's done by Treasury, mm -hmm. uh, the U.S. Treasury. Yeah. And I know Commissioner Quinn, 
Commissioner Knoll and myself have all watched videos of, mm -hmm. of this. The regulations are as clear as mud. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and that's why we need to have a consultant. And it's not coming from taxpayers in the county, it's coming from the federal government funds. So we're given part of our funds, but we can't do this for us. I mean, Mark kind of been, Mark Wilson has been part of our, our thing. So it's going to be fun to do this. And we're going to have an opportunity to make a difference in our time. So that's the key. I don't know if the commissioners have anything to add or well, those videos that you talk about make it very clear to me that I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I mean, the just the reporting schedules and the criteria, what and it. It's so beyond me, and I know that uh, we've got talented people in the in our county that, that we're going to need help with this. And this is a long going, like I say, at least five years if it's not extended. Yeah. This is going to be the, the reporting and the, everything that goes along with it are tremendous. Yeah, you know, there's always change over commissioner and department. Yeah. Oh yeah, so yes. we have consistency. Yeah, the yes. firm has been around for a long time. That's probably one of the more important things that we have that consistency. Yeah. So I would just like to say that we've interviewed um, more than just uh, Swindoll, Jansen, Hawk, and Lloyd, um, but we felt like they were the closest fit to what we needed and, and um, to bring the strengths to the table for what we needed. Um, and just to let everyone know that they're going to help us with our internal policies in place. And we are getting 3,121,992 is our total for Atchison County. Uh, we've got that first half um, deposited as our first tranche, but we have not had any conversations where we're gonna move forward working with them hopefully um, and have those round tables from beginning to end so that there's accountability and transparency through the process. And 5% of that total is only $156,100. And to me, from what I've seen through this, it is absolutely needed and it's 100% worth it to work with um, folks that are boots on the ground and educated every day solely on this um, to help us through the process. So, um, and for everyone that's reached out to us um, with ARPA requests, again, we have a list of all of you. We're not forgetting, we just haven't got there yet. And we want to make sure that we do the process um, correctly so we will be having those conversations um in the future we just we haven't got there yet because we've been doing other <laughs> more more critical um, things currently so and for the arpa you have up to 2024 to allocate 2026 to uh to spend but with that being said we want to get that first tranche going um with an idea of where we're headed so that we will get the second tranche and uh, it always looks better when you're getting grant funding to have a plan um, and get it utilized versus just sitting there so that's kind of where we're at in the process mm -hmm. Anything else? It's, I, I don't mean to pick nits, but it, it's actually a little less than 5% for 5% of the first two and a half million. And then it was uh, 4 was it 4% after yeah. that. Yes. So we worked out to 4.8% for the 149,000. Yeah. Was the amount that's in. The Perfect. So the chair would entertain a motion to approve an engagement letter with. Uh, I got to put my <laughs> spectacles on. Swindle, Jansen, <laughs> Hawk, and Lloyd. Yeah. Um, should we entertain a motion to approve a signing the engagement letter? So moved. A moved by second. Commissioner Quinn, seconded by uh, Commissioner Knoll. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I assume you're ready to vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Passes three to zero. A signature for all commissioners. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, be a part of your county, and we're looking forward to working with you. And um, I didn't say this in my little opening there, but uh, I think everybody wanted to get through their budget, and so we're even having more counties contact us. So we've got eight more on the list besides the seven we've already got. And what's cool about that is you really learn a lot. So I'll give you an example of one the other day. We're working at uh, 
a county and I do their budget there and I knew that they were trying to figure out how to how to pay for a new health department and because the building was being rented and all that well a county out west was actually utilizing uh, the funds and we're going through and trying to figure out if it will work or not to have a health department that would fit COVID and all that like drive through testing and just a lot of different things. And this is a very small county out west and it looks like it's going to work. Well, what happened is <laughs> I was just sharing that because I knew on the budget they needed that. And so when John came over there talking about the funds, I go, wow, we could maybe build half the building if it met the standard and you had a way to divide it so it showed that it was truly a health department and a multi-purpose building because they ran out of space in their courthouse. And so there's just things like that when you work with multiple counties, you learn things and it may not fit your situation, but it might. And so that's what's cool. That was what we found in Spark. We really learned a lot at working with all the different counties. So anyway, we appreciate the opportunity to work with you and uh, really looking forward to it. I think that'll be helpful too when we have our lists together yeah, to sit and, you know, and visit with you guys about it. Yeah you'll probably see yeah. similarities yeah. amongst the counties. On that, that's a, that's a great point you just made. Over at Mar Marion County, uh, they were just starting those conversations. And what they did is actually, they have five commissioners now, they went from three to five. And so they all kind of wanted different things. And so they're actually sitting down and putting a list of kind of like a dream list together of things that would fit. And we said, well, when you get that done, email us. And then what John's going to do is going to go through and we'll make a probably an Excel spreadsheet, and whether it qualifies or doesn't qualify. And then we can go through and we can kind of weed those things out. So like maybe five of the 15 doesn't. Uh, so the other 10, we'll figure out how, you know, kind of a rating system maybe or something like that. So if, you're, if that's something that interests you, that's one way we're doing it at Marion County, because that's what they want. They want to, they want to come up without us being there, just kind of talk it through as a group. And then come back to us and say these are the things that we want to know whether it work or not. So that's one way to uh, to handle it. You'd ask about that yeah. earlier, I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Hey, okay. Thank you for your Thank time. You. Yep. Um, that is the purchase order that we discussed this morning. Um, the situation with the brothers, where um, they said they would give us a discounted rate on some chip and seal in exchange for traffic control. So by doing that, we're able to um, get about three more miles done with an out-of-pocket cost of the 44908 So basically, this is a change order. We're just uh, changing some things around to- yes, it does not change the original contract, really. Um, um, they have signed off on the requested additional and the reduced rate. So we have documentation of that as well as the purchase order. Which didn't the email say that it wasted about 16 miles, right? Um, I thought, I thought it did. Well, it's, it's an I mean, it's definitely in our favor. So, yeah, yeah yes. we're, we're increasing the chip and seal on yes. three, at least three miles. Yes. yes. So. All right, so, but and I guess the different, I should have done that differently. I apologize. So yes, this is what it is, but this total is because of that savings. So even though these are 37,000 a piece, we have the savings of 30,279. So that's where we came up with the 44. And I apologize. I did not even look at that like that okay. until you just showed it to me. I didn't want to prove something that didn't add that. No, I, I see what you're I saying now. So this is the but, net additional cost. Yes. $44,908 yes. for approximately three additional miles. Yes, and this is what goes with that, if you want to look that over. So this is what they've offered, the reduced rate, sure. which gives us um, the total of the 495. So our original total was the 525. The bid with the reduced rate is the 495, which left us a savings of 30,279. So that total minus that gave us the, well, it was the 75,187 minus the 30,000 left us with the 44, which is what we would have out of pocket. Thank so you. The, for the chairman entertained a motion to a change order for Vance Brothers of Kansas City, Kansas for $44,908. And 16 cents, which would include three additional miles uh, on Greeley Road. I'll make a motion. It's been moved by Commissioner Noel. I'll second. Seconded by Commissioner Quinn. 
All in favor, any further discussion? All, all in favor, sir, the father say aye. 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 Passes three to zero. I don't, is there any other new business I left here? Okay, old business. I think we have it. Uh, County Councilor updates. I don't have anything to add for today. What? I do not have anything to add for today. Okay, need for executive session. I think we're doable. That's what we're just Go ahead. Yeah. We'll do a little bit. Send us a copy of the fantastic. Thank you. That way you can get it. Thank you, guys. What? Thank you, Ken. Jody and uh, Brian. Brian. Yeah. She texted me to see if we had the time for it. So I, was like, oh. <laughs> I didn't check my phone. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Be under oh, she's here. Personnel matters. So she's in here. Do you have a motion? Sorry. Sorry. I didn't check. Uh, how long do you think that this will take? Uh, the uh, executive session 15 minutes. I'll move that the Board of County Commissioners recess into executive session at 1 p.m. to discuss personal matters of non-elected personnel as allowed by KSA 75-4319B1 and that the purpose of the closed session is to protect the privacy rights of the employee that the board come out of executive session at 1 52 p.m. in the commission room, first floor <laughs> in the, EOC. the EM, yes? EO, uh, EOC. EOC, I can never get there. EOC, and those present will be uh, the three commissioners Pat Henderson, county counselor, Jody Moore, HR, Brian Oswald, and Mark Wilson. Hmm? Do you want me to stay around? Oh. Somebody had mentioned me earlier. Okay. That's not it's, it's, yes. yes. Oh, okay. and, and Michelle Phillips. I'm, I was not aware of that. Sorry. <laughs> I, I didn't even know you were there. <laughs> so we have a motion by Eric. Do we have a second? Second. Mr. Quinn. All in favor, so good father say aye. 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 Okay, we're back at open session. Uh, Commissioner Noll, do you have a, a motion? Yes, uh, I'll move that the Board of County Commissioners recess into executive session at 1.52 p.m. to discuss personal matters of non-elected personnel as allowed by KSA 75-4319B1. That the purpose of the closed session is to protect the privacy rights of the employee and that the board come out of the executive session and Seven. Right. I can't. Two oh seven. Two oh seven. Math on the fly. PM in the EOC and those present will be uh, Mark, Brian, Jody, three commissioners, Pat Henderson, and Michelle Phillips. Thank you. All the papers stick up by the side. Aye. Court executive session.
Okay, we're back in open session. Uh, any public comment? There's no public here in our meeting. Anybody in line that has a comment? I don't see anybody. The chair will entertain a motion to adjourn at 12 7 p.m. I'll second. All in favor, Senator Father Sagnar. Aye. Aye. Bring. I'm saying something.